I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Tarek Lewis, the founder of Volume Finance. Tarek, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Ashton, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, and many warm thanks to the amazing audience and community that you have brought to this show. Thank you. Good, good to be here. Likewise, and thank you for bringing your insights into the future of blockchain. We're in a huge transition point right now where all these amazing chains are popping up and the future of interoperability, of just being able to move assets and apps between chains seamlessly uh, is something that's coming to fruition. Um, and I know that Volume and Paloma Chain are, are working on helping that transition to make a seamless experience so more people can get involved in blockchain and right. enjoy it. Um, so right. I would love to start by hearing a little bit about just volume, what your team's working on, and then we'll dive into everything multi-chain. Yeah, uh, so volume's a startup um, in the crypto uh, ecosystem. Uh, we're about a one-year-old company launched in January of 2021. Uh, we're a team of engineers, uh, UI, UX designers, and marketers and community managers really focused on bringing blockchain technology uh, for the next phase, right? So we want to unleash a lot of new financial technology that has not been fully explored in the blockchain space and make it available at scale. Um, we're really excited about our current focus on scalable and secure cross-chain communications. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the hottest areas and uh, we are just so excited to be surrounded by great startups and great companies who are focused on this area. And what this is about is blockchains communicating with blockchains and communicating at speed, not just communicating at the slow speed, but communicating at speed and at scale. Uh, our company volume focuses deeply on tools and building into blockchain to blockchain networking. Uh, the main project we're focused on today is Paloma. Uh, we at palomachain.com. And Paloma is, we want to say a fast and secure decentralized blockchain that talks to other decentralized blockchains. Hmm. Incredible. And I definitely see the, the need for more solutions that work well and at speed. Uh, it seems the, the current problem with these cross chain compatibility, at least what we've seen in the past weeks is primarily people using bridges through smart contracts on Ethereum. Right. There's always some exploit or something that goes That's wrong. Right. And uh, yeah. we've seen just this month, hundreds of millions of dollars siphoned out of these contracts. Uh, where right. people were just trying to move their assets to the next chain, uh, which yes. is horrible. Um, yes. So, so maybe you can talk a little bit more about what makes Volume unique uh, as a blockchain automation tool to sort of solve this problem. Yeah. So I think um, the core of our vision is that we were really born out of the, you know, work we did in the Cosmos uh, ecosystem. So Volume was launched as a supporting and a co-founding partner in uh, Similia.Finance, which is one of the successful cross-chain blockchains that exists today uh, for the DeFi space. And, and the project work we did really was focused on cross-chain communications using um, what we call the validator sets of the proof of stake network of the Cosmos to secure communications and secure the bridge over the chain. Uh, we think the validator set um, security level uh, protocols are actually very successful in doing well. And that, um, you know, what we, our, our focus really and what makes us unique is that we're now extending that security model of having the validators who are, of course, securing the chain secure and ensure and watch to make sure that transactions that are moving across chain and across these bridges are actually valid transactions and that no sort of weird shenanigans or problems are, are being set. And of course, we are looking for the validators also to make sure they review the code. So validators on the chains we work on actually work, you know, review codes that's being used to control the bridge communication. And that we think is a unique approach mm -hmm. that uh, you'll see us talk more about as we talk about validators reviewing proposals for approving different contracts that work on bridges and on chains. Mm -hmm. Okay, understandable. And you mentioned that Volume is sort of like a, uh, is the company that's running Paloma as one of the first projects, which is yep. a blockchain in itself. Uh, yes. Does this fit into a, a bigger vision and 
you know, is volume is working on other things that aren't Paloma or that comes in the future? What's the relationship yep. there? Yeah. So, uh, you know, volume was approached by the Paloma Foundation. Um, this was a, you know, entity called Columbia Networks. Um, they're based uh, in the Caymans and they asked us to say, hey, volume, would you please develop this open source protocol for Paloma? Uh, so we're very fortunate that the foundation for Paloma has approached us to build this out. Um, it is one of the many projects we were working on, but all the projects we work on really leverage this type of cross-chain communication layer and cross-chain communication idea. Uh, right now, our focus is very much proudly on Paloma. Uh, we are super excited um, to bring it to life because we think it opens it itself, will unleash a number of developer-friendly tools and different developer friendly access to this type of cross-chain communication thing we're hearing about mm -hmm. specifically one of the targets is we want paloma to talk to every blockchain mm -hmm. um, and we want the validator sets of paloma to be motivated to really communicate or enable communication across any public blockchain we think that's a very big and audacious goal for paloma and then that's taking up all of our time these days but really excited about it mm -hmm. definitely uh, a lot of time but it as long as you're doing it right, then you know it's worth it for that time. Uh, and now you you mentioned there, you want Paloma to speak to you know, every blockchain. And with, I'm I'm curious on uh, the. So I've looked into Paloma and it's talking about automated smart contracts. You know, right. with the smart contracts being able to work on multiple chains. Maybe you right. can. Uh, Tell us the difference between perhaps a smart contract running on, on the Ethereum network versus right. how these automated smart contracts work. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, the best example I, I would want to give is, you know, imagine that, uh, you know, you have an NFT for, uh, you know, let's say your NFT is for a game and that game is called Alpha. And suddenly there's another game called Beta and both Alpha and Beta are games that are run on different chains. But Alpha and Beta came to some agreement that, you know, there'll be Alpha tokens awarded to Beta game, to, you know, game NFTs and Beta game, you know, NFTs will also receive Alpha tokens, sort of the combining of the two. And this became something exciting. You know, wow, I could now use my, you know, NFT Alpha on the Beta chain. But how do you make that work? Like, how, how does a user make that work so that they don't have to worry about it, so that it just works seamlessly? Well, what this means is that suddenly now you need to have an NFT contract that can work on both the alpha and beta chain, but keep in touch with each other, sort of know what's happening, whether or not the token or the NFT in game A on game alpha is actually doing something that you know might be relevant for the beta chain. That requires coordination. That requires somebody to be checking and looking and saying, hey, here's what happened to your NFT on alpha. Now you can move it on beta. You may get some rewards on the beta chain. Uh, for your alpha token, or you may get some rewards in the alpha token for your beta chain. This type of uh, interaction requires, we think, coordination. And now if you scale that to this alpha, beta, you know, gamma, delta, all the way, you know, so all the number of chains that people may be doing games on, you kind of find, well, wow, it becomes really, really difficult for, you know, just one developer to say, hey, I'm going to try to manage all my NFT deployments and all the possible games that are e interesting and profitable for these NFTs that I have created or the NFTs are that are in my original chain. Mm -hmm. What Paloma wants to do is say, listen, that problem is only going to be a big problem. And it's a big challenge and an exciting one. Wouldn't it be great if your NFT could go to any chain it needed to go to, to play profitably? Wouldn't it be great if your users can have those NFTs move around and not worry? And that there was a secure network that would be monitoring and managing, quote unquote, the ledger of messages being sent across these different chains. That is what Paloma wants to do in a very simple way. Say, hey, your NFT can play on any chain and on any game that it is approved to play on. And we think that's exciting because we know there's going to be more chains and we know there are going to be more NFTs and we're going to know there's going to be more creativity in the space. So making that type of coordination is what Paloma wants to do. Mm -hmm. Definitely <clears throat> great example. And specifically talking about games as well. We're just at the very beginning. You know, I've spoken to a lot of amazing game five games and and not even any of the AAA, you know, games that have millions of players have implemented NFTs yet, and they're going to need a solution like that. And that will right. actually probably drive millions of people into uh, crypto and NFTs in overnight uh, when that happens. Correct. So getting the yeah. technology ready for that. Now, it, uh, it's a big feat. Uh, I'm, I'm curious if you can give us a scope on, you know, you mentioned you've been working 
uh, on with volume for, for over a year, but where exactly is the technology at with Paloma and where yep. would you like it to be to get to that point of onboarding these huge games? Uh, okay, so Paloma currently we're um, on uh, test nets. So we already uh, have code that is live. We have uh, approximately over, I think we have over two to 300 validators that have just discovered our project. We, we have not been doing any marketing of Paloma um, up until this is our first podcast ever. Um, so we've not been really talking about the project. We've been really heads down. And I think uh, some folks accidentally discovered our GitHub. Uh, and where we released code, we didn't say anything. And literally overnight, um, we've had about 3,000 uh, you know, folks jump into our telegrams and our Discord wow. um, from all over the world. Um, you know, shout out to our Turkish friends and our Russian friends, Indonesian friends, Vietnamese and Chinese friends and Korean. Um, and so they just started running the software. And once they started running the software, um, we just started to really quickly upgrade. So Paloma currently right now is uh, deploying uh, contracts to every EVM. So any EVM chain that is out there, Paloma can deploy. And we started deploying them in tests to see how we can scale. And this weekend, we're going to be moving on upgrading to Paloma Testnet 7. And with that testnet, we're going to be showcasing some of the cool things that Paloma can do in the real world, even though it's a testnet. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for our egg drop, because you know uh, pigeons like to lay eggs, um, that's actually going to be happening very soon, where literally uh, people who are uh, essentially just on the Paloma testnet can now collect eggs on very different Ethereum chains. So we're going to start with Ethereum, but EVM chains are going to be able to do so. Just to start showcasing the reality of, hey, um, I can get an egg on any different network and I can go collect that egg, but that egg is sort of managed and sort of coordinated by the Paloma blockchain, like a nervous system, a cell connecting to other cells in the brain. So we're super excited. That's just within the next few weeks. And of course, we're racing towards mainnet, which is our focus to like now really bring this to, mm -hmm. hey, we want to release tokens. We want to secure the network and we want to start, log you know, sort of launching the other chains and other contracts on these other chains. Very cool, Tark. That's a great first example use case to, to showcase to the, the people that are actually building on the network, uh, you know, what it's capable of. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And now with developers, and, and uh, by the way, as well, congratulations on, you know, when you have great code out there and you see developers find it and all of a sudden start joining uh, through yeah. organic uh, yeah. marketing, you know, and not really yeah. having to push out any hype, yeah. um, you know that there's a great foundation in the project. So that's really yep. great to hear. Uh, I'm curious more on the exact kind of users and developers. Is it that that can come to Paloma right now? It, is it developers that were working on Ethereum and no solidity or is it for right. other programming languages? You know, what kind yep. of developers are joining with Paloma? Okay, great, great question. Okay, so currently the, you know, we are first launching on EVM chains. So if you know Solidity or Viper, as a developer, you can come build on Paloma. Paloma also is communicating because it's a Cosmos chain. It will also have Cosmosm contracts on there. So if you are familiar with Solidity, then learning Cosmosm is very easy. You could think of Solidity as a pigeon version of, uh, you think of Cosmosm as a pigeon version of Solidity, um, but written in Rust. So we really want to make it easy for anybody who knows Cosmosm. Anybody who knows Solidity, anybody who knows Viper, to essentially come to Paloma and write contracts to control other contracts or any contracts on any other chains they specify that are EVM compliant as well as Cosmos compliant chains. Those are the two for now. So, um, and I think what we're excited about is the use case a little bit. I want to say we just announced with uh, Jump Trading and Pith uh, that there are now Pith price feeds on the Paloma testnet. So what that means is if you're in DeFi, and you want to experiment with uh, what we call, you know, limit orders, things that are very hard to execute um, on any of the DEXs because, you know, you're, if, you, if you try to run limit order in the DEX, it's like you have to always be tracking the state. But if you mm -hmm. give Paloma the job to track the state of the prices, you can actually start using Paloma today to execute limit orders on any Ethereum DEX on the mainnet wow. today. You don't have to wait on the testnet. Of course, you should wait on the. You don't have to wait on the mainnet. You should wait on the mainnet because it's not secure. But in experimenting and trying these things out, mm -hmm. developers can test the power of unleashing new, amazing, and what we call standard, you know, transactional finance primitives like limit orders, stop loss orders, 
on Paloma on the Ethereum mainnet. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of the sort of developers we're looking for. Folks who are looking to say, wow, I'd like to try that, you know, just to see how it works so they can get a get a handle on what's coming in mainnet and be ready to build some really cool stuff that will have a lot of demand. Wow. And I could see many DeFi traders ears perking up when you mention limit orders on, you know, yeah. a DEX that has limited functionality right now. Um, yep. And so that's super cool. Um, but I feel like you know, what we've what we've discussed so far in the interview, it's all pretty technical, you know, very, very developer focused. Um, yep. And as you move towards the mainnet, you know, mm -hmm. one of the uh, hopefully benefits of uh, cross chain, you know, seamless interoperability is going to be the user experience and not having yep. to know, you know which asset your blockchain is on and then moving to right. the other blockchain and it's all just in the back end. So how much does the Paloma team have to uh, think about that when you release a mainnet and you have like an end user product? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a big challenge and I think it's a serious one. The user experience for cross chain activity is tough. Um, you know, I want to say shout out goes out to a lot of the other players in the space, in the cross chain space. We've done a great job of making, you know, uh, wormhole, axlar, uh, layer zero that have gone to make front ends very straightforward and very intuitive, even multi chain, etc. Um, we think there is an opportunity to start and build from where those leaders have left off in extending the UI experience, so that folks don't have to know, you know, what chain they're on. All they have to know is that the transaction is working, they have the gas fees needed, and that they can complete the transaction. So that's, I think, one thing, you know, we are, it's a challenge. The way we're doing about it is we're going into the marketing to look at those folks who've done a really good job at it. Uh, and again, use that as an inspiration for keeping it simple and making it painless for users to experience the cross-chain world. Because yes, UI UX is tough and um, it's going to be, it's going to be a hill to climb. Definitely. And people that are not developers that want to follow along uh, for the update for the mainnet and you know yep. sort of learn about the advantages for DeFi and NFTs, yep. what's the best way for them to stay involved in the news? Yep. Uh, you know, so we uh, currently they can follow us uh, on uh, Twitter. We're at uh, Twitter slash Paloma Chain. Um, I think it's Paloma underscore Chain um, or Paloma Blockchain. I got to get it clear. Let me just check on that and. Um, also, they can just go to, um, if you come to volume.finance, it's easy. Um, you'll see Paloma there um, on our main page, and that will take you straight off to our site where you can see our documentation. Uh, also, we do have a Telegram, uh, which is Paloma Chain, t.me slash Paloma Chain. Mm -hmm. And our Telegram, uh, you can just lurk, sit there, watch the action, uh, see the community at work as we continue to build a ship and release this new cross-chain future. Fun, Tark. Uh, and thank you for that. I will leave the the Twitter, Telegram links as well in the description box to make it easy awesome. for people to access. Um, yep. I, I appreciate your insight into you know, this cross chain compatibility, getting rid of you know these ex exploits and, and inefficiencies in, in bridges, and just trying to move from one blockchain to another and allow people to access DeFi, NFTs, all that great stuff wherever they are, whenever. That's right. Um, That's so right. keep up the great work with your team. I would love to follow up. Uh, and, and here, you know, closer to the main net, um, how everything is going. Um, yep. So let's definitely follow up in the near future. You got it. We look forward to it. Thank you so much, Ashton. It's been a pleasure being here. Thanks to your community. We hope we'll see you guys uh, in the nest. <laughs>